You are now checked in to Stand Up New York Labs. Oh, yeah. Very serious. is the mandatory Samson podcast coming to you live from Stand Up New York Labs in New York City. Hi, my name is Chris Flannery. I'm joined, as always, by Joseph Noe. Hi, everybody. We're also being produced by my main man, Shelby. Shelby, thank you for being here. We appreciate the effort. Thank you, Shelby. He nodded for everybody that's listening. You can't see him, but he... he... Nod. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the program, everyone. We are back after a one-week hiatus for Thanksgiving. Joey, did you have a nice Thanksgiving? It was very nice. How was yours? You know what? It was it was good. I enjoyed myself. I fell down the stairs at my house by accident. What were you doing? Uh, you know, just walking like a like a dummy. I probably walked up and down those stairs about twenty five thousand times, and that so eh, once every you know twice every fifty thousand times I walk up the stairs, I fall down them. Okay. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Yeah, you look fine. Thanks. I feel pretty good. Nice. Uh, if you're watching on the video, youtube.com slash mandatory Samson, I'm wearing a New York Rangers jersey, Matt Zuccarello. Me and Joe will be in, a, in attendance at the Rangers Avalanche game at the Garden tonight. That should be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a great time. Uh, welcome to the program. We're going to talk about a few heavy topics today um, and hopefully end on a little bit of a lighter note with a new segment that we're going to get to in a minute. What we are going to get into today is the Laquan McDonald shooting in Chicago, the Planned Parenthood shooting, the shooting in San Bernardino yesterday. A lot of shootings. Yeah, a lot of guns. Bullets for everyone, Joey. Yes. NSA ending bulk phone records collection and something really interesting about U.S. Special Forces in Iraq. Uh, my man Cesar Torres, I was talking to you on Twitter, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But mm-hmm. that's an interesting story we're going to get into. Uh, but first... We're going to read some emails that we got, answer some questions, and give a couple of shout-outs. The segment at the end that I was alluding to, Joey, is you're going to read passages. Oh, nice. Uh, Well, you know. Don't act like... Okay, fine. Surprised you know what's happening. Uh, You're going to read passages up for the 2015 Literary Review Bad Sex and Fiction Award. Bad Sex and Fiction. Yeah, apparently they give out an award for shitty erotica i guess every year and we got a couple of passages they're quick it's nothing like the 50 shades of gray thing it's not going to be you know too crazy but just quick passages and we probably do this every week i feel like we have enough that we could do it for quite a while oh nice uh you ready to give some people some shout outs oh let me tell you this yes i had another story about isis propaganda which is something we talked about i think two weeks ago when we were here Mm -hmm. um about how you know how many people are actually in ISIS? Are they really just good at putting their message out, this stuff? Read a great article about ISIS propaganda. It's too much to get into this week with the other stuff that we have yeah. to get into. Um, but next week, that's something that we're definitely going to get into, and it's very interesting stuff. So I just want to put that out there. Okay. You know, in case people ran across it, we're going to cover it. Just relax. We'll, we'll do it next week. We'll get to it. Yeah. A uh, couple of shout outs. I want to shout out Nighthawk Brown on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. The comments. Appreciate talking to you. Becca on Snapchat, Snapchat she uh, asked me about uh, Turkey shooting down the Russian plane, which I'm mm-hmm. sure you've heard about. Here's my thoughts. Erdogan, the president of Turkey, and Putin are posturing right now. Um, Putin says that Turkey and ISIS have oil ties, like they're, they're doing business together. Uh-huh. So right now they're just kind of like trading verbal barbs. Obviously the possibility exists that something could happen militarily. I don't necessarily know. I think Turkey will probably back down. Uh, We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But I'm just going to put that out there. So back on Snapchat, you asked about that. And I also want to give a shout out to Nob, who sent me quite a long email that I read, responded to, but it's too much to get to on the the podcast. But Nob, I appreciate the the support. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you for the email. And, you know, if you want to get in touch again, feel free. If it's a little bit of a shorter email, maybe we'll read it on the... uh, On the air. All right. You want to get into some of these emails? Yes. Because you have the coverage of the San Bernardino shooting. Yes, I do. I didn't. uh, Truth be told, busy night last night, busy day. I said, Joey, why don't you cover it? Mm -hmm. And you're going to in a little bit. Yes, and we'll see how we do. We'll see how we do. Yeah. I also did find a Hannity clip that maybe we'll play a little bit of that and we'll get into it. Okay. All right. 
Let's do some emails here. Got an email from my man, Praveen. He was talking about last week when I brought up the dark web, we were talking about uh, like anonymous was, t- yes. anonymous was taking down some of the donation pages for ISIS on the dark web. And I was like, I'm not really sure what the dark web is. Praveen to the rescue. He says, with regards to the last podcast, dark web is composed of sites on Tor, an encrypted internet service and browser developed originally by the Pentagon. Uh-oh. Dark money. <laughs> What? Oh, dark money is just bitcoins, which is online fiat currency that keeps holders anonymous. Okay, interesting. Uh. I wasn't, I understood the kind of the concept, but interesting that they're using bitcoins. There is a lot more to it, but that's the gist. Perfect. That's all we needed. Also, listen to this. Yeah. Also, props to Joey for stepping up his game with research. Nice. Yeah, I think you're doing a good job. Looking uh, forward to his policy white papers. Thank you, Praveen, for bringing that up. I really appreciate it. A couple of weeks ago, we mentioned that maybe you were going to write a little bit of an agenda, like let everybody know yes. how you feel about stuff. Have you done that? I have not started working on it. It's been a holiday But season. are you working on it? No, but I'm going to. Okay, so you lied to everybody all yes, the time tonight. Okay. Praveen, thank you very much for bringing it up. Do that. I want to, I want to know what your policies are. Okay. You know, abortion, foreign policy. You know, we'll, we'll gotcha. work on it, but, I, but I'd like to have that. I think that'd be a, a nice segment. All right. Praveen, appreciate it. Allie sent us an email, um, and again, I'm going to try to like skim through them to get to like the questions, but all right. Allie says, hey, Chris and Joey, I've been listening to the podcast for a few months and loving it. Oh, thank you. We love you, and thank you for listening. I'm a college student from Wisconsin, and on behalf of my state, I apologize for the nuisance that is the existence of Scott Walker. Well, <laughs> we appreciate that. It's not your fault. There's nothing no. you can do about it. Uh, as much as I like to be on top of current events, I often get frustrated and tired of the same political and societal issues. So my question is, what do you guys do to take a break from bullshit? I usually have a nice Netflix binge. How about you guys? Joey, you want to take that? Yes. I usually go to the go-to, which is the PS3. And sure. And I kill things or race cars. Virtually. Or you know, yeah, but yes, actually yeah virtually. Anyone, yeah. Thing. yeah. Right. Okay. That's great. Yeah. I mean, I'll get on the Xbox One. I'll play a little NHL 16 online. I like to play the hockey ultimate team mode. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I'll listen to other podcasts. I'm here a lot listening to podcasts. I find that relaxing. Uh, Hang out with the girlfriend, watch some TV. You know, nothing too crazy. What? Yeah. You said girlfriend. It's sweet. Yeah. I have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, I like to play a little Xbox One when I get some, some like real free time. Uh, Allie goes on, for the rest of the email, note that I am majoring in English education, so I think more about the rhetoric involved with talking about the issues. Fair enough. She says, I was thinking about how people use avoid using the phrase Islamic radicals after listening to this week's podcast, which was obviously two weeks ago. Obviously, as Chris said on the show, it's because that's what they are. That is fine, but I think but I think there are too many ignorant people that don't realize the difference between an extremist group like ISIS and the rest of the Islamic community. Fair enough. Yes. And part of that... Hannity clip, he obviously uses the phrase Islamic radical. We'll, of we'll get into it. So it kind of ties into this email, but okay. Because of this, I think it would be better to just refer to their group names like ISIS as to limit the correlation between these groups and the religion as a whole. Obviously, this isn't really a solution, nor will it stop prejudice uh, altogether, but it is something to think about. For example, people don't refer to the KKK as Christian extremists, though that is uh, th- their origin. Let me know your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, there, there's something to be said about being, I don't know. I'm not crazy about censoring language. Like, if you want to say Islamic radicals, it's not really your problem to worry about the dumb people that can't handle the fact mm-hmm. that you're saying that where they can't separate it. But I, but the point is well taken. I understand that. Prom, I don't know. I'm kind of, well, you have any thoughts about this? I'm kind of conflicted about, you know. I, I'm not. I, I think you have to be careful on what you say because it can be misconstrued. Um, in this case, obviously, it, we want to deliberately separate the extremists from the religion. Right. But, yes and no. See, I don't necessarily... I don't think that all Muslims are terrorists. However, if a terrorist is Muslim, that is part of the equation. And I don't think it should be taken out of the equation just because we go, well, they're bastardizing it. Well, so what? A lot of things get bastardized. Like she's saying, the KKK are Christian extremists. True. The guy we're going to talk about later with the the Planned Parenthood thing, he's some kind of Christian terrorist. So Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem calling him that. I do understand that you want to limit the amount of people that are out there trying to attack Muslims, any Muslim, because they they just assume that they're all terrorists. Like, Mm -hmm. of course, you want to limit that. But again, language policing and kind of, I I don't know. I don't think we need to necessarily tread on 
uh, lightly because there are dumb people in the world. Like we shouldn't, we shouldn't cater to the lowest common denominator, you know, which is yes. always the thing that comes to my head, but okay. But whatever. So we're just putting that out there. We kind of talked about it a little bit. Good point by Ali, And we appreciate the yeah. question. She also went on to say during this week's episode, which is a couple of weeks ago, Joey used the phrase, the melting pot. I don't want to be too nitpicky because I know exactly what he was referring to, but I've grown to hate that phrase. Allie attached a PDF that I read about why the melting pot concept is sort of... It's, it's supposed to be a salad now, right? Yeah, well, that right, exactly. And that's what I said to her in the email. Like the Instead of the melting pot, it's sort of a salad bowl where everybody can kind of maintain their distinct... Identity. Cultural identity mm. while sort of being together. I get that concept, but I like the concept of the melting pot better where you can kind of take everybody's ingredients, throw it together, and let's all try to recognize each other as Americans. You know, we can all bring kind of our own whatever. like Flavor to it. Flavor to it, right. But I, I, that's part of the problem, I feel like, the idea of being in a salad bowl because people – you're seeing it in France where there's like certain Muslim populations that maintain their own kind of religion and kind of cultural I- identity – but they're being excluded from society and they're not part of the society. So mm-hmm. it's like you have your cantaloupe over here, your honeydew over here, your orange over here. Like it'd be better if we could kind of all get together because then people don't feel ostracized. And that's like gotcha. the idea sort of the melting pot. Her point was the melting and the part of the article that she attached is that the melting pot kind of whitewashes the idea that, you know, people just kind of assimilate really easily and there's okay. no kind of cultural bias and any of that stuff. But that's a whole nother point. I get what she was saying, and I just wanted to bring it up. Lastly, what would it take to get an MSP sticker? I'm considering donating just for the sticker. Ha <laughs> Don't worry about donating. That's fine. Um, I, I told her, just send me your, your address, and I'll send you some stickers. That nice. pretty much goes for everybody. You know, you can donate if you want, but um, there's stickers available. If you send the address, you get a sticker. Yeah, I mean, that, that could work out. Uh, thanks for being a great part of my week. Allie, thank you, Allie. We Aww. really appreciate it. Uh, very positive email. We love it. Uh, feel free to write back anytime you want. Um, got an email from Chris. He says, Hey, Chris and Joey, I've been a long time listener to the podcast when I heard it from the TFM podcast. Thanks. That's great for crossing over. I just wanted to get your opinion on the recent college and university protests, um, over the lack of diversity, specifically the amount of African American students. I attended an urban university in the South, and now I currently work in an urban university in the Midwest. And I recently encountered an on campus protest of a group called the Irate Eight. They released a list of demands related to the demands made by the students at the University of Missouri, such as racial awareness, classes for all students, faculty and staff, the hiring of more black faculty and doubling the amount of black students on the main campus over the next three years. My question to you is if they are trying to make these conditions a reality, why are they being so exclusive to black only students, faculty and staff? I understand the premise of the overall demands, but why not include other races and ethnicities? I guess that's a a reasonable question. Here's my answer. If you're a part of a minority group, you can, you are not necessarily beholden to fight for the rights of all minorities. Minorities. If you're black and you're, you're specifically talking, you know, your demands or your whatever, you know, your, your protest is about helping black students have, you know, have a more diverse campus and stuff like that. I don't have a problem with you working on that. I think naturally, just that exclusively, but I think naturally by creating those types of protests and having like certain demands about that, Mm -hmm. I think naturally that kind of spills over where you start to recognize, oh, but what about the Asian kids on campus? What about the Dominican kids on campus? You know, whatever it is. I think it naturally kind of uh, spills over to that. I don't have a problem with it being specifically a black issue on campus, you know, because then let the... The Latino kids have have their, you know, you can get together on that, but I think you could be separated as far as that's concerned. Yeah, well, so I th- I feel that a lot of more things go in- into that, such as uh, how many applicants they might actually be getting. Well, he gets into that. Yeah. Also, my question is, to them is, have they looked at the numbers related to admissions, hiring interviews, um, and retention rates? If only 10% of applicants, excuse me, are of color, isn't 8% of students attending a, a pretty good rate? I don't know whether they've looked into that or not, yeah. um, so I can't really speak to that. Also, I would like to see the acceptance rate of white students to that of black students. If the acceptance rate of white students is lower to that of black students, what is there to complain about? I guess, but I, again, that's something that I, we'd have to look into. Mm-hmm. I don't, really, I, you know, I don't know offhand. Affirmative action isn't a perfect system, but it has helped with student diversity. Sure, 
Uh, and then he closes with this. I'm very much for diversity and acceptance on campus, but at what cost of fairness of accepting worthy students? If I or a friend of mine had similar GPAs and test scores and was denied acceptance to a university because the university was in the process of diversifying due to these demands, I do not believe it would be fair. Just my opinion. Thank you for any response. Right, it always sucks when you're the, the the last cast die, I guess. Yeah, the last die cast, right. Yeah. I mean, the that's the, always kind of the double-edged sword of you know, affirmative action type things where if you have a black student and a white student, they have the same credentials and they, they accept the white student. Yeah, of course, maybe that seems that is unfair, I guess, to the, to the white student who's also qualified. However, they can't accept everybody that applies. So, but by the nature of the beast, there is going to be probably like half the people that apply are similar. There's just mm-hmm. like, what, why are they accepting you over the other person? Well, it's sort of a judgment call. And I guess in a situation where you have, potentially black students that don't get accepted at the same rate or they're coming from less advantage than the white student. I don't know how they would determine that, but resume, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like, if you come from a lower class, uh, you know, socioeconomic class or whatever, oh, okay. you, that's sort of a disadvantage off the bat. Whereas the white, you know, again, we're just generalizing here, but pretty much in all acceptance programs or processes, it is a subjective choice between people. So, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it might be unfair if they're targeting we need to get X amount of black students in at the expense of some white students that are applying. Yeah. It is what it is. I mean, I you know, ideally, we get to a point where you don't need that type of affirmative action, where it is just based on whoever's better or whatever. But we know that there's a lot of people coming from disadvantage, and this is trying to, like, even the score out. That's just the idea, well, you know. Also, the other thing is the I, I'm assuming the only way these colleges know if a person is a certain race is by select by choosing it as a choice. What would well, happen yeah, I mean, you, if that wasn't the case? You're saying like just an anonymous application, yes. like you don't get to see a name or or race or anything like that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know how that would affect it. I, I would think that. Yeah, but that well, right. But then you have to take it. To, okay, so say you have student A and student B. You don't know what their names are, what their race is, anything like that. They have the same GPA, the same. Pretty, they're identical in almost so every how way. Do you pick? Right, but you'd have to go then to like an essay or something that they wrote, and from that you're going to be able to determine probably a little something about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's always going to be subjective. It's not purely we have a. You, you know, we're just going to let in. There's always a, a subjective to it. So, you know, it, yes, that, that is unfair. But in any case, even if you took affirmative action out of the situation, it's going to be subjective also. Like if you're if you're not picking based on we need X amount of black kids or whatever, whatever. I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling with that. But thank you, Chris, for your email. Appreciate yeah. it. Let's close up with this. We got Megan, Megan from Canada, who we haven't heard from in a while. I was very excited to hear from her because I, I never know who's listening, you know? It's like I know people are listening. Yeah. But if I don't hear from you for a little bit. I don't know if you're still listening. Exactly. So it was nice to hear from Megan. Uh, Megan says, Chris, how cute is the bromance between Mr. Obama and Mr. Trudeau? Hmm. It is cute. She says, I'd wager an eight on a scale of one to sleep in Corgi Puppy. And she did attach pictures. <laughs> uh, the Corgi Puppy's still cuter, I told her, but Trudeau and Obama are, are pretty cute together. It's nice. She says, I know you have a ton of crazy ass shit to cover this week, uh, but she wrote a um, an op-ed about the Syrian refugees in Canada. I read that. It, it was very well written. I appreciate it. She goes... This is what I wanted to get to, though. She has a couple of fun facts because we're about to get to it. In light of the abortion terrorist, since 2001, the FBI has warned of 48 Islamist terror attacks. There's been seven. The FBI has warned of zero white, white, white wing, (laughs) right wing extremist attacks. There's been 22. Hmm. So that just shows you kind of like what they're focusing on. Meanwhile, it's more likely you're going to get domestic terrorism or or like these, you know, Christian right wing people doing stuff than anybody else doing it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looking forward to this week's episode. Megan, thank you, Megan. It was nice to hear from you. Joey, why don't you fill the Samsonites in on the uh, San Bernardino shooting? We'll get into that a little bit. And then I have a couple of, uh, you know, like I mentioned, a couple of other stories that we'll get into. Okay. Uh, as we've mentioned, I'm not going to mention the names because... Yeah, th- no let's not do to. it. Yeah, fuck it. That's the thing. And and I have this Hannity clip that maybe we could play a little bit of. We'll we'll see what goes on there. Yeah. Wow. So we're just gonna say there was a uh, male and female. So the male was a inspector with the San Bernardino Public Health Department for five years. Okay. He is a known citizen. This is the deadliest shooting since Newtown, which was uh, 2012, Carol 26. 
Now, this was how many? 14, I think? Yes. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about this is, as you heard, it happened in the Inland Regional Center, which is a center for people with developmental disabilities. Yeah. Which However, is... the shooting had was unrelated to people with uh, disabilities. What happened was the center has conference facilities which were being used at that moment by his co-workers. Apparently, there was a holiday party slash banquet slash training event going on. Right, but he worked at this place, right? No, no, no. He worked for the county who uh, was having the event at the facility. Oh, I see. Okay. Apparently, he left early. Now, the interesting thing is apparently the couple had a six-month-year-old girl that they left with the grandmother. Who so, couple? What are you talking about? The couple. What couple? Oh, the two shooters you're yes, saying? Yes. Oh, okay. The, the one yeah, shooter. I'm t- let, me, the- let me just say this. I swear to God, I really, I got like little drips and drabs of this. I did not do any research about it, so I'm really yes. relying on you to tell me what the gotcha. hell's going on. So apparently they left their six-month-year-old girl with the grandmother Okay. on Wednesday, which means that apparently there was some inclination that something was going to happen on Wednesday. Well, not really. Why? Because they left. The, they go. We got to go on a trip or something. Like you know, that that's sort of Heinz. Like, what are you gonna do? Okay. I'm sure it's not weird that the grandma watched their kid once in a while. All right. Right. Yes. I mean, possibly, but what, you know, what red flag would that be? So the shooters fled in the black USV, prompting a huge police chase. Eventually, SUV. Yeah. SUV, which led to a shootout. Right. Uh. So that happened. Uh, there was about 20 officers w- that were with them with the shootout. Right. Uh, one interesting thing was there was a, t- a, a lot of loved ones text messaged their families. Sure. One of the interesting ones was this one. Uh, people shot in the office waiting for cops. Pray for us. I am in luck in an office. Yeah, so that well, must let, be let me freaky. T- it must be terrifying. Let, let me tell you this: with all this pray for it, that is not going to help. <laughs> mm-hmm. Those prayers are not going to to keep you safe. I don't think. I mean, it's like a, it's like a thing you say, I guess, in the moment. But I'd be like, send help. <laughs> yeah, don't pray for me. That's not going to do anything. You got to send, uh, you know, the police. And meanwhile, let me say this: the police did show up and do, you know, they they yes. they helped the situation. Um, I, I, let me talk about this. I had this Hannity clip. No, 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 keep going, Joey. Never mind. We'll play it in a minute. All right. And then uh, Obama was very active on this one as well as the uh, uh, Boston Clinic shooting. Right. Uh, just one thing that we should. Uh, we should never. Th- uh, th- this is a quote from Obama. We should never think that this is just something that happens in the ordinary course of events because it doesn't happen with the same frequency in other countries. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, it's. Cr- Honestly, when I heard about this stuff last night and I was like doing the research about these other shootings, it's like I'm sick of talking about the same shit over and over again. We've said it a number of times. This is preventable or and even stoppable if you get rid of guns in America. Mm-hmm. I mean, get rid of them. It doesn't happen anymore. Or if you limit the amount uh, and the scope and scale of weaponry that people can get their hands on. It's that simple. But we can keep pretending like it's not a problem. The people are going to come out and not do anything about it in, in Congress or whatever. So just let's, why why are we even going to pretend like we care about it? Oh no, it happened again. So what? It's going to keep happening if we choose not to do anything about it. That's just the reality because it's tiresome to just keep talking about it. Yeah. And the point with the guns, uh, the rifles that they used were AR 15s. Do, should you really be able to that handily get an AR 15? No, of course not. Right. Even if it's difficult to get it, you shouldn't be able to get it. What what do you need that type of uh, weapon for that? I read that they were, they were using long, uh, what's it called? Long, um, it's not long bows. I can't think of the word. Oh, long gun, which is like a yeah. shotgun. Or Same thing as the, the par- Planned Parenthood shoot. Like, it's, it's a pattern that they keep using the same weapons. Let's not let those be something that you can get your hands on. How Absolutely. about that? Or, fine, let people get their hands on them, but stop complaining that people get shot. It's a tragedy. It's not a tragedy. It's a foregone conclusion. You understand that if we keep doing things the way we keep doing them, this is going to keep happening. There's no mystery yeah, about nothing's it. nothing's going to be different. No. If we keep proceeding the same way, the same shit is just going to keep happening. 
Look around the world. Look at the measures that, that they've taken on Australia. They had a mass shooting. They banned guns, like tightly restricted. No shooting since then. It's not a coincidence. That, that's not an accident. But we keep going into this mystery like, why does it keep happening in America? Because we have too many guns and too many people want to use them. That's yes. it. That's just the reality. And then, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you got anything else? Yes. Um, there was some talk also if this was a terrorist action or if this was a domestic right of uh, occurrence right uh the interesting thing is he had apparently traveled to saudi arabia and returned with the with the the partner the female that was involved in All the right. saudi arabia our our best friends in the middle east uh, apparently a lot of problems come out of there but we, we you know we have a good relationship with them with oil wise so we're not going to you know we don't want to disrupt that relationship we're not going to attack saudi arabia god forbid even though they had to do with 911 all the hijackers were from saudi arabia mm-hmm. they learned there that's where the money was coming from that's ah, okay i have this hannity video clip you good with that yeah, pretty I'm much good with that. all right i have this hannity video clip cuz i like when stuff like this happens i like to t- Tune into Fox. I like to see how they're presenting it. I tune into MSNBC, see what they're doing, CNN. I, I put on Hannity, and we're going to play what Hannity has to say in a, in a minute, and we can kind of like chop it up, and then we'll move on to the next thing. I turned on MSNBC. Chris Hayes was on. Okay. And he's saying, look, right now, this is at like maybe 9.30, 10 o'clock, I put it on. He's saying we're in a, we're in a point right now where there's an information void. We're not getting new information. We know that new information will be coming tomorrow and the next day and whatever, and we're going to get accurate information over time. There is no reason to fill the void with guesswork. And this is what I was talking about when I was watching the Paris stuff with Molly a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. ago. I was like, it's fine. Let's watch it, you know. But just keep in mind that the early reports are usually wrong that they're they are going to be on the air for 72 hours you know a week now just filling time yeah i have to fill 24 hours right so keep that in mind when you're hearing this information a lot of it's not true a lot of it is speculation whatever chris hayes is doing the right thing there being like there's no reason to fill the void if you don't want to watch anymore because we're out of information turn it off Mm -hmm. hannity took a different approach Uh, of course and this is what really frustrates me and this is where the narrative gets why there's such a divide why nothing's going to happen because the left is hearing the way that it should be, you know, I'm saying the liberal networks and whatever, even CNN to a certain extent, are not just throwing out random information. Fox wants to paint this as a terrorist attack, and why don't we say this, and why don't we do mm-hmm. that? So we're going to play some of the Hannity clip uh, now. It's in two parts. We can chop it up, and then we can move on. Uh, Evan walked in the room a little while ago. Hi, Evan. How are you? Can you make sure that the uh, computer audio is coming through nice and clear when I get there? I, I do see as this is unfolding more and more, it's certainly apparent to me, and you know the FBI yeah. tactics, that it certainly appears that they are treating this as though this is some type of terror attack. Uh, okay. <laughs> so just spe- let's just speculate, right? We don't yeah. know. There's no official word. But just see... Because, We're going to go with it. Yeah, because I'm a fucking FBI expert, and I, I feel like this is terror. Okay, so here, let's just continue with this, because it's so fucking predictable and frustrating. And what's he going to say? Is he going to talk about... Maybe this has to do with guns. No, it's not going to have anything to do with that. No. Reed, it seems to me that if they knew that it wasn't, they would have already put that out and, and, and quelled everybody's concerns. Are they too that. cautious, though? To, they, they knew the name for a long time. They didn't release it. Are they too cautious? I, I heard this name hours ago tonight. Right. Um, are they too cautious? They won't give any description of, of those that are deceased. They, they are being cautious. Well, what's the caution about? The being caution PC? is they, right. Totally. It's so totally the FBI is PC. PC. Do, do you think that's what it is? Do you think maybe it's just smart to have the facts before you put the information out? You watch the way that Paris handled it, like when the terror, like a much mm-hmm. larger incident took place there, and that was actually terrorism. We don't know what this is. I'm not saying it's not. We, we don't know, really. You look at the way Paris handled it, they were pretty tight-lipped about everything. Yes. They came out, they said, we know this, we know this, and that's it. And then they just went away for the next you know day, and then they, then they let you know as information came out. But like... What is this insatiable need, particularly of people like Hannity and like these kind of right wing people? Why? Why do you need to jump to conclude? Because that fits our narrative and we can talk about why Obama's fucking up with attacking the Middle East and all this shit. It's just beating the war drums more to be like, <laughs> it's fucking ISIS. Is it? Do, do you know that? Why do you want it to be ISIS? You fucking vulture. Like you want to, you know, they want a war. They want a war. Right. The FBI answers to a higher calling. And the, the truth of the matter is this, is this could be a politically charged incident if it turns out to be uh, an ISIS cell. 
and they want to be- and ISIS sell. We talked about this, and this is why the propaganda thing like probably could have got to it this week, but we'll get into it next week. ISIS is great at acting like they have their hands in the cookie jar all over the place. They don't. No. And to say it's an ISIS cell, what does that even mean? It's just two or three randos that uh, did something that that is not... It seems like a personal thing to me that that, that they went to this place where they worked and whatever and they and they shot some people. It, why, why would this be that they're going to go shoot people with cerebral palsy? That that's that's what ISIS is going to do now. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, isn't a cell like a certain amount of people too? Oh, whatever. He's just using the you know yeah, okay. group. Whatever. He's just saying it. Absolutely sure. But the any FBI that it has is been very being. clear. I got to give credit to these guys. They have pointed out there's a thousand probes ongoing right now in the United States. That's why I have been so outspoken and passionate. If we know that a certain percentage of Syrian refugees have ISIS sympathies, and the National Director of Intelligence, James Clapper, and James Comey, who everybody respects. the F- I, I hate James Clapper. He's a dog, and we've talked about him a number of times on the <laughs> podcast that I can't stand the guy. Meanwhile, how's he tying this into Syrian refugees now? It's like Because he wants to. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we know that there's a certain... But do we know that? What, what percentage? All really? of them. All yeah. of them. Because none of the... He's just assuming these people are from Syria? It's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Also, nobody from Syria is here anyway. Even if we were accepting a million of them, they're not in the country for at least 24 months, right? Yeah. FBI director and our assistant FBI director and the general in charge of the tactics to take out ISIS are all saying that ISIS will infiltrate the Syrian refugee community. Why would we risk the lives of Americans? Why would we take a chance like that? Well, it- uh, I don't know, because it's not really taking a chance, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Then, meanwhile, go ahead, Joey, but I'm going to skip ahead mm-hmm. now, uh, and then we'll just finish up this clip, and then we can move on. But is it me, or is it like a non secretar? Oh, of course. It, it has the, he's, but that's what they're doing. They, they, because the quicker they can do that, the quicker they can jump from this is ISIS, which it's not. There's no, you know, what does that even mean? But it's not clear at all. To Syrian refugees are ISIS. You know, you, you can do, then now you, your narrative is just working together. But clearly, there's no, that, that's not the case. There's no way to even speculate about that. He got that, though. Yeah. Well, he'll always find a way to get there. Here, this is the end of the clip. Let's uh, see what he has to say. I'd like to try to understand why we have to be so sensitive meanwhile this is mark Furman, the guy that was the the racist guy from the oj trial oh (laughs) with known suspects known names known shootouts known murderers and this this is the this is the problem when you make political correctness ahead of justice See, this is the other thing where they're talking about this political correctness thing. What, well, why? What's politically correct? Because they, Obama doesn't want to say Islamic radicals, so he's being politically correct. No, he's just not doing it because in his mind, and fine, maybe it is political that he's doing it, but it's like, but in his mind, saying Islamic radicals makes dumb people that watch this network who can't handle reality and don't understand what's going on, it might make them go out and attack Muslim people incidents against muslims so fuck fine if you want to say but don't make it a politically correct thing that that's why they're not putting it out maybe they're not putting the information out because they don't know yet that would make more sense to me sure maybe they're trying to be responsible but okay but wait and then we'll close up with hannity's thoughts about this you're not going to get justice yeah it's just not going to happen you know and listen the name i first heard the name saeed farouk hours ago today i heard it during my radio show which didn't end until, you know, four and a half hours ago. Uh, that name was, was, was passed on to me. So they knew more, and I do, it does raise a, a very important question. Why are they so slow in, in giving the public the information? And I guess maybe they don't want people to rush to judgment in this case. Uh, the group CARE, which... By- <laughs> right, yes, you know yeah. the answer, right. So they're not putting the information out because they don't want people to rush to judgment. Smart, because no harm is done if you hold something back for 12 hours to make sure you have all the facts. Co- correct. By the way, he's going to hold a, a press conference, released a, a presser, and saying later tonight the Greater Los Angeles Office of the Council on American-Islamic Relations uh, of Southern California will hold a press conference uh, with leaders of the Muslim community to condemn today's deadly shooting spree in, in San Bernardino and okay. to offer condolences to loved ones. Uh, which I can understand. I don't think people blame all Muslims. I think there are people that blame radical Islamists. And this is the distinction. And this president can't even utter those words, Eric, 
Not to get too political. Some- yeah, not to get too Your entire <laughs> life is political. This entire segment is political. And that's the only reason he's talking about it, so he can make that point. And then he goes, well, I bet I don't want to be political about yeah. it. Like, shut the fuck up. Meanwhile, you, who, who's, whose audience is most likely going to misconstrue this information? His. Yeah. So he's talking, like, he knows exactly what he's doing. It's just a way to, t- whatever, you, we've, we're reiterating, but you get you know exactly gotta, what he's doing. Some people cannot distinguish the difference. I just some distinguish people just, it. No, but some people just assume all Muslims are bad. That's why we have to be extremely careful with trying to put names out there and, and trying to well, let all of them wait together. Wait four or five hours to put out a name? All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. <laughs> Hannity, Hannity, that's how he closes. He finds it absurd that we'd wait a few hours to be sure. Meanwhile, people did put out... Um. Na- names and pictures and stuff like that recently with Paris, with this. Shelby was telling me, uh, he's not in here right now, but he, he mentioned to me before that uh, that Pamela Geller, the Jerome Muhammad woman, mm-hmm. remember? The one that oh, likes yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, pu- she put out a name of someone in a picture and it, it was it's claiming that this is somebody involved. It wasn't. Hey, it wasn't. It was like a Domino's delivery guy that she just put out there. That's insane. You, you're jeopardizing that person's life. Y- yeah, there should be. That's uh, why you wait. There, there should be some kind of uh, retribution or punishment for that. To taking an individual like that Definitely. and just I mean, deciding it is hey, criminal I'm to do this. it. Sure, right? Because you're you are literally jeopardizing that person's life. If somebody is like, "Well, fuck, we got to get that guy." Okay, well, now what what happens? All right, let's move on from that. Okay. I think we covered a good job. We'll stay on top of that, obviously. Yes. Little updates and things, but I mean, you know, because I feel a lot more is going to come out. Yeah, of course. And that's that's when, okay, so three days from now, fine. We can wait three days to find yeah. out for accurate information. You don't have to rush in the first four hours to get the information out so you can create your narrative like they're trying to do on Fox. It's absurd. And that's the case. I mean, I watched both. They, that is what they're doing. This is not what MSNBC is doing. I barely watched CNN, but it was like Wolf Blitzer and, it, you know, mm. whatever. I don't, I'm not crazy about Wolf Blitzer. U.S. Special Forces in Iraq. This is an interesting story, Joey. Now, on MSP 54... We talked about a small amount of U.S. special forces on the ground in Syria. We talked about that. Then later, Cesar Torres tweeted me, and he said, uh, November 6th, saying that his neighbor is a retired special forces soldier and told him that we'd been in Syria for a long time, and this was just an announcement for public uh, interest, pretty much. Which I was like, okay, interesting. How long is a long time? I don't know, maybe a year, I don't know, whatever. It didn't specify, but he was saying yeah. that his neighbor, now again, this is anecdotal that his neighbor who was in special forces says, we've been there for a long time. Fine, I remembered that because then later I saw an article about uh, November 30th, I read an article about how an Iraqi Kurdish fighter had video on his phone of U.S. special forces guys fighting ISIS on September 11th this year in Iraq. He claims that the U.S. has been fighting a covert war for months there, even though Obama said, quote, American combat troops are not going to be fighting in Iraq again. Uh, The U.S. military denies the involvement, and there's quite a bit of other footage as well about uh, U.S. soldiers fighting in Iraq for months in a covert war against ISIS, even though we're not supposed to be there. So that just I I wanted to bring up uh, Cesar because he says that this was happening in Syria, which they just announced. We haven't announced really anything about, you know, Iraq for quite a while, but it says that we've been there for a while fighting on the ground. Anyway, I have a couple of interesting quotes and then we can move on. But this is just an interesting thing that I wanted to bring up. This guy, Kirwan Hama Tata, which is a, the best name, who's a Peshmo, Pesh, I can't say it, Peshmerga volunteer. Peshmerga is the, uh, the Iraqi Kurd fighting force. Oh, okay. He says... They fight, and they even fight ahead of the Peshmerga. They won't allow anyone to take photos of them, but they take photos of everyone, referring to the the U.S. Mm -hmm. soldiers that are there. Then a couple of anonymous quotes from people. The joke going around here is there are no boots on the ground because they're all wearing sneakers. (laughs) Great. In February, for the first time, four American snipers came to South Kirkuk because we lost several Peshmerga to the ISIS snipers. The Peshmerga snipers were weak, and before we could hit uh, a single ISIS sniper, we would lose a few men. Therefore, we desperately needed American snipers. They had taken part in all the fights in South Kirkuk, and they had really good snipers. So what's coming out, apparently, and based on what Cesar is telling me, the U.S. is fighting kind of covert wars, even though we're saying there's no boots on the ground. They're, they're just wearing sneakers. They're there doing, doing the work. What's interesting is that I kind of think that's the right approach. I think we might have talked about this a little bit. 
I think covert operations where it's like, are Americans here? No, wink, wink. That's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, Don't... That way they can infiltrate, get to know the people, get to know the players, get to know the scenery. Right. And that can be more effective than just running in with people with boots going house to house. Well, and the other thing, it's like, because we're not, like, again, I've said this a hundred times, we're not going to put in a hundred thousand troops, which is probably what you need to do, some kind of coalition to go in there and really just take out everybody in ISIS. You could do that with a hundred thousand U.S. troops and no doubt about it, you could do it. But nobody's called for anything more than 20, 25,000 at most, which now you're just man for man. You're going to be in, involved in this like ground war that's crazy. So if you're not going to go all in with a hundred thousand troops, yeah, maybe your best bet is to send in a couple of hundred, you know, special forces guys that can go in and try to infiltrate, maybe cu- find out where the money's coming from, what they're doing, and then try to attack that way. Um, it's interesting. So I don't yes. know. It's something we keep our eye on. But it seems like the U.S. is in Iraq and Syria kind of working covertly with Kurdish forces to try to, you know, take out ISIS cells here and there. I, I think you have to be. You have to be proactive. Yeah, I mean, th- that's but the, you're going to face scrutiny no matter what you do. With well, it, that's, what, that's what I was going to say. It raises questions. Should th- that's the bigger question? Should we even should Obama or should the government have the ability to just send in covert troops without telling anybody, without getting any kind of authorization? That's a bigger issue we don't have to get into today. But I think that that's you know that that is the question. However, I think the covert missions, if not hundred thousand troops, is probably the right way to go about these things. Yeah. Because you can just get it done. Because then people are going to be like, well, the Americans are over here. We didn't invade. We're not doing anything. No, I have no idea it's what you're talking about. plausible deniability, you know? Uh, all right. Interesting. Wanted to bring that up. You got anything to say about that? No, we're good. NSA bulk collection expiration. As of Saturday, November 28th, the NSA lost, yeah, lost its legal authority to collect phone metadata. The first Edward Snowden leak-based article came out June 6, 2013, uh, November 28th, 2015. NSA bulk phone collection has ended. Now, granted, of course, they're doing a lot of other spying. There's different bills that have been passed, the uh, like internet-related bills, which we're not going to get into, but they they are pretty much able to get the same information just different ways. Oh, good. Uh, but at least symbolically, something stopped here. And thank you, Edward Snowden, not a traitor, a hero in my opinion. He did a good job, and he actually, uh, ha- you know, actionable change happened. Yes. Got any got any thoughts on that, Joey? I time will tell if he's a traitor or not. That's no boo. No, he's not a traitor. Let me say this: I booed you. I have the uh, soundboard set back up. I have some new sounds. It's just not set up today because I didn't think we'd be using it too much with kind of this heavy stuff we're talking about. You you think time will tell whether Stone's a traitor? What are you talking about? Nothing. I I just wanted to say something to upset you. I apologize. Okay. Well, fair enough. Thank you. I, I accept your apology. Um, let's see what we want to do here. Let's get into this Laquan. McDonald. I'm trying to make this a little bit of a quicker episode today. Yes. So let's see what we can do. But I feel like it always ends up going longer than than we're intending. This Laquan McDonald situation is uh it's a bad one. This is one of those one of those shootings where you just look at it and you go, wow, this did not have to happen. The guy, the cop that did it is somebody that probably should not have been there at all because mm-hmm. he's has a, a history of, of these types of issues. What do you know about this shooting? Have you seen the video? I have not seen the video. What I do know is there are several inconsistencies yeah. with the overall uh, narrative of this one. Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Okay. We'll get into that. November 24th, 400 days after 17-year-old Laquan McDonald was shot and killed by Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke, dash cam footage was released. Now, there was a lot of concern whether they were going to release this dash cam video because it's pretty disturbing and it kind of shows exactly what happened and they were worried that people were going to riot and be upset and protest but as I they think, should yeah as they should and they have the right to do that obviously they shouldn't be rioting but no why, you yeah. definitely have the right to peacefully protest and, and get out there and get involved the video needs to come out in my opinion this is, I, i'm i'm definitely for see and this is where it cuts both ways where it's like you should wait to have the proper information to put it out but i think information should be out there people have the right to weigh that information and react how they want to I feel that 400 days plus is a little bit long to have sat on that information. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Okay. Eight cops. I'm just going to set it up. We're going to watch the video quickly. Okay. Uh, Eight cops came to the scene after reports of somebody uh, car stereo theft and trying to break into a trucking yard with a knife. It turns out that Laquan McDonald 
who's 17, had a three-inch, like, knife. Okay? okay. So it's not like a giant weapon that he's carrying around. Van Dyke, the cop that shot him 16 times, mm. uh, the only cop to fire any shots, was on the scene for 30 seconds. Okay? So this kid's there. This guy shows up. 30 seconds. He's dead. He's put 16 bullets in him. And then the cop is fucking reloading. He didn't think that you 16 make shots sure was dead. A, yeah, of course. What you were talking about is that there's some inconsistencies with the video. There is no sound on the video, which people are saying is incredibly strange uh, that there'd yeah. be no sound because it's all wired for sound. Police also lied saying that McDonald lunged at him at the, at them, which is why it was necessary to shoot him that many times, I guess. But the video shows that that's not the case. Also, Burger King, which was right there, like where this took place, they had surveillance footage, which got erased after four officers spent three hours with the footage, which is interesting. Th- that's my favorite. But the fact that it was 86 minutes. <laughs> yeah, they cut out 86 minutes of footage, <laughs> which is just absurd. Just the shooting part just happened to get erased after these cops yeah. were dealing with it. So that's something you keep your eye on. and We'll see where that goes. Van Dyke, the cop, had 20 allegations of misconduct filed against him. Ten were related to use of excessive force. Of the 14 with known outcomes, like incidents that, you know, allegations yes. that went to something, he received no disciplinary action. For 20 things he's done. That's yeah. insane. Well, right. Now, that begs the question, why is this guy there? And this is part of the discussion when we talk about all these police shootings, um, because this is what I wanted to bring up. Hannity, when he was talking about the... Um, the shooting in San Bernardino, there's a clip going around of a cop saying, I'll take a bullet before any of you. Don't worry about it. Saying to people getting them out of the building, okay. which is a heroic and brave yes. thing to say. And that's, he's that. trying to control the situation. That's how you want. People. That's what you want in that situation. Definitely. Nobody's saying otherwise. Hannity references these protests in Chicago though. And he's trying to like, you know, make an equivalency where he's like, these people in Chicago are protesting, but this guy's a hero. Yeah. They're two different people. This is, Guy Van Dyke, who has a history of violence, shoots this kid 16 times and is, by the way, charged with first degree murder at this point, is not the same person as the person in San Bernardino who's helping the, the, the people out of the building and saying you take a bullet for them. Those are two different people. Yes. We can simultaneously hold two ideas in our head that a cop can use excessive force and kill a kid when he didn't have to. And we can also know that there are cops out there that are brave and doing the right thing. Yes. They're two different things. And that's what pisses me off. Hannity's see, it's like all oh, this fucking narrative that they're trying to put out there. No, they're two different things. The protest can happen, and we can honor somebody that did the right thing in, in the right circumstance. Listen to this, and then we're gonna get to. Um, we'll watch the video, mm-hmm. and then have a, a quote, and we can move on from this. But this is something I want to put out there because this is a this is a big deal. And again, it's stark contrast of like this is the wrong way to go about this. Obviously, yes. Fifty six thousand three hundred sixty one allegations of police misconduct or violence in Chicago, only 4% of those complaints were sustained even to a point where somebody would look into them, regardless of what the outcome was, whether somebody received disciplinary action or whatever. So of 56,361, 2,227 were actually accepted as like, okay, that might have been something. We don't know the outcome of those, whether people received disciplinary action or not. Yeah, I'm going to say that's a little bit hard to go with today because I could see one might say that some people are sue happy or... Well, it's not suing. It's saying, uh, I was arrested and the cop broke my wrist. That's oh, how... oh, okay. So it's... So there's 56,000 of those. Only 4% of them were even something where they were like, all right, we'll look into it. Okay. That seems... You're right. I mean, people can yeah. just complain that the cops did something. But we're seeing this kind of pattern in Chicago, especially, where there's a lot of violence uh, and a lot of, of, you know, relation with the police there's there's issues in chicago obviously yes let's watch this video joey real quick now again i'll kind of explain what's happening to people that are listening on the audio if you're watching on uh you know youtube.com slash mandatory sams and you can see what we're looking at but i'll kind of explain it as it goes there is no audio it's uh, you know so we'll just watch it and we'll see what happens uh here we go all right this is yeah you can hear it it's so weird that there's no it says no audio right at the top all right so now the cop is driving. There's a co- this is the dash cam of the cop car driving really fast onto a what appears to be like four or five lane highway. You see in the middle of the road a person walking, and then we know that this is Laquan McDonald. All right. This cop car slows down, is maybe how many feet away from this guy? 40 feet? Yeah. 30 feet? There's another cop another 30 feet away from him. There's several cops, you know, cop cars around. 
No other traffic. You just see this kid in the middle of the street. Everybody's slowing down. The kid is slowing down. Let's continue the video. All right. Now the kid is literally walking like at a very slow pace, hiking his pants up because they were falling down. He has his arms out. They're not in his pocket or anything. And it's kind of clear, actually, at this point that you can see that he's holding some kind of knife. But it's not. He's not gesturing it at anyone, but you can see that he's kind of holding something. All right. He's walking. He is in his own lane. There is nobody near him, right? Yeah. He's not gesturing at anyone. He is walking at a slow pace. Now, granted, yes, should he probably ideally have just stopped? stopped? Yes. I'm not saying he shouldn't have. However, he's not being aggressive, and he's not an, a problem at this point at all to me. The cops are maybe 20 feet away from him. Van Dyke starts to approach him for absolutely no reason, and that's one of the quotes that we're going to read in a minute. Cop has, he has his gun drawn, Van Dyke. Van Dyke is walking towards him, walking towards him, walking towards him. Oh, and then he sways. He starts shooting him. Boom, 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 boom. On the ground. Okay, he's down. He's dead. He's on the ground dead at this point. Or maybe not dead, but he's critically injured. He's not going to be a problem at all, even though he wasn't a problem at all. He's subdued. More bullets keep getting fired. We're talking 16, and we know that Van Dyke reloads because maybe that wasn't enough. And now the kid is dead. That's it. That's how quickly it happens. He wa- I'm telling you, he wasn't a problem. The, no. there was, obviously, the cop did not need to do that. Maybe use a taser. Maybe keep talking to him. Keep walking with him. He's not lunging at you. He has a knife, so you know he's not going to be able to do anything unless he gets real close. You'll be able to shoot him anyway. On top of that, the reason that they were even called to the scene is because he was still in car stereos and maybe tried to break into a truck yard. Mm -hmm. To me, that doesn't seem like an offense punishable by by death, right? No, not at all. Okay. (sighs) Then you continue the video a little bit and you see Van Dyke walks over. Um... Here, let me skip ahead a little bit. And you see the cop come over, and he kicks the uh, he kicks the knife away from him. That's pretty much how the video ends, so we can stop because it's just on. You know, there's no audio there, but that's what happened. You video is readily available if you just search for Laquan McDonald. Obviously, you can see what happened there. Uh, the other interesting thing was after he's lying dead there, it's another minute, minute and a half before anybody comes over to try to like administer any kind of CPR or any kind yeah. of medical care. Uh, to me, it's like, could that be? Could that, I'm asking, let me ask you, yes. could that have been avoided? Yes. First of all, he wasn't even walking towards the cops. No, he's veering away from he's the He's veering cops, away from them. And he's not walking it. He's not running. He's just walking. No, he's just walking. It's a 17-year-old kid. Obviously, should he be stealing stereos? No. no. Should he be trying to break into a truck yard? No. Do we understand that there are people that come from bad circumstances that get caught up in the wrong thing and maybe they think that that's the only way that they can make money or do whatever? Yeah. And it's a kid. It's a 17-year-old kid. So I have a question for you. Sure. When it was revealed that he had PCP in his system, does that make any difference whatsoever? None at all. Not to me. It doesn't, no. Okay. Because if he's acting erratically, like Evan sent me a video last night that we're not going to talk about today because I I read about it, whatever, but it was a shooting in San Francisco where this kid swarmed by, what, eight, nine different cops, and he gets shot like brrr, like a hail of bullets gets killed. You read into the backstory of that. He had been shot by bean beanbag pellets or whatever, mm-hmm. non-lethal force. He got up and continued to be a problem. He had like an eight inch, nine inch knife. It was a, an unarmed assault that he had done. So there's different factors that play into that. Now that might be something that we talk about later, whether he should have been shot or not. But I understand why at that point you're going to maybe use lethal force. This kid, on the other hand, Laquan McDonald, to me, it does not justify at all why you've been using le- lethal force. He's not a problem. Yeah, and there's no one there for him to hurt. He's, he's nowhere near anybody. Right, and he's not acting erratically, even though there might be PCP. In his, who knows how long PCP stays in somebody's system? I don't know. Uh, these, are, these are a couple of quotes, and then we can move on from this, but I, this is something that I wanted to put out yes. there because I think, you know, it's interesting because obviously there was misconduct on the part of the police as far as how they handled it. They lied with the tape, this and that. And Rahm Emanuel, people have been calling for him, the mayor of Chicago, mm-hmm. to resign at this point. He's not going to resign. But we'll Over see. this. Over this. We'll see, unless this goes up the ladder somehow. But, uh, you know, I'm sure he's not... Uh, he might have something to do with it, but I'm sure he's not going to be implicated in this situation. 
Mark Claxton, who's the director of the Black Law Enforcement Alliance. These are two of his quotes. He says, common sense mandates and training dictates that you maintain a safe distance and take advantage of opportunities to cover and concealment. The police actually create the extreme level of danger with bad tactics. To an extent, he's correct. And I think in this case, you see that they definitely could have been behind the police cars yelling at him, get on your on the ground, drop the knife. Now, we don't have the audio, so we don't know what's being said there. But clearly... They they did not seek cover no. and concealment the way that they could have been, which is obviously what their training mandates. He goes, he continues, not only did you have an individual pretty isolated, totally isolated, mm-hmm. he's by himself, it looked to be contained, but you as a professional responded to that have the advantage of time. There's no reason to insist that something happens in one minute, two minutes, or five minutes. Correct. You could have walked with this kid along this highway to, and figured out what was going on. And figured on. out what's going on, right. And then if he lunges at you or it's clear that he's on PCP or whatever, he's not making sense, maybe it's a different story. I'm not saying definitely, but in the fullness of time, you figure yes. out how you can handle the situation better. They didn't do that. And that and that's a that's a valuable point, I think, that he's saying there. Why why does this need to, this kid was on the scene for 30 seconds and he pumped 16 bullets into him? Why is that necessary? It, it questions why he was even there. Too. Who? Uh, Van Dyke, as you said earlier about the 20 incidences earlier. Oh, sure. Right. I mean, right. But even taking that out of the equation, why does he need to show up and within 30 seconds have a resolution to this? No, you, if, if it's not an immediate threat and it's not a threat at all, in my opinion, that this kid's walking around, obviously, yeah, shouldn't, shouldn't, he shouldn't be doing it. He shouldn't no. be in the situation, but okay, he is. So let's not play like moral cop after the fact. He is in the situation. So how are we going to resolve it peacefully? And we're also going to get to it in a minute with the Planned Parenthood shooting, a way that we can kind of like juxtapose these two situations. Okay. But again, that's that. That's the point. Why does it need to happen like that? It doesn't. This could have gone on for quite a while. Get the overtime pay. You know what I mean? Um, you got any final thoughts about this, Joey? Or, it's, or what it's, just, it's a shame. Yeah, it's another 17-year-old kid. And again, you know that the circumstance in Chicago is not a great situation right now. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of gang violence. There's a lot of problems between police and the citizens there. And, the, you know, there's just a ton of issues. And, and this is just another thing that, you know, we can add to the uh, the Rolodex of, of terrible, unnecessary, in my opinion, shootings. Oh, the camera's back. Huh? Or oh, the camel's back. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to break the camel's back. I mean, the guy at least was charged with, like, they yeah, did the right was, thing. Yeah. So justice hopefully will be done here. The other aspect of it that I think is interesting is, I, you know what? I kind of lost my train of thought on it. Never mind. I don't know. Okay. Lost my train of thought. That's fine. We'll move on from that. But anyway, so that's out there. We'll stay on top of it. We'll see where the uh, the trial goes and... You know, that's another video that we uh, unfortunately had to break down here of uh, another kid. Uh, oh, oh I remember. Uh, that, that just reminded me. I know that it's unrealistic in certain circumstances to say shoot for the legs or something like that. They're 10 feet away from him, 15 feet away from him. If a trained cop can't hit this kid in the thigh from that distance, then they shouldn't be on the force. Yes. Like, I understand that in the heat of the moment, but this was not a heat of the moment. This was happening very slowly. There's a lot of cops there to back up. You could have probably incapacitated him without murdering him. Well, he showed up on the scene and within, what, 30 seconds, he had the gun out and already shot. Yeah, 16 he's, not, bullets. Right, he's not thinking, how can I de-escalate this without killing the kid? He was just like, well, there we go. Yeah. That's, that's a huge problem. And again, these are all questions that are going to come out. Why was this guy even there? That's part of the criminal, ju- you know, the, the, the police reform that needs to take place. 20 allegations against you, even if, even if two of them are true, you're done. Even if they can prove to them. like, what are you there for? We don't need, you don't need bad cops. And that's, that's the frustration when you have good cops that aren't willing to say, no, this guy's, he's no good. There's an issue. Yeah. Right. It's the, you know, they try to stand up for each other, which I understand the, the camaraderie, but it's making it life more difficult for the good cops. When you have bad cops that don't get punished for, for, you know, their, their misdeeds. That's, that's a, a big aspect of this. All right. Planned Parenthood shooting. I have a Carly Fiorina clip, by the way, that we're going to get to. Uh, okay. I really can't stand that woman. <laughs> How's she doing in the polls? Any, any, any uh, major change? Not, nothing really. No. Uh, we'll, we'll get into more politics stuff next week. But, okay. this, you know, we got a lot of stuff to cover here. Planned Parenthood shooting. 
Three dead, nine others hurt last Friday as a gunman stormed a Colorado Springs Planned Parenthood clinic, followed by an hours long standoff resulting in surrender. Officers entered around 4 p.m. to, quote, convince him to surrender. He had a long gun. Why did this guy, this white, white, Mm -hmm. radical guy, radical Christian, if we're going to call it what it is, right, who goes to an abortion clinic, we, we know what his motives are there, uh, he he said supposedly said quote no more baby parts while he's being arrested right so yeah. what is that ba- okay politically motivated yes. religiously motivated he's a Christian radical if we're mm-hmm. gonna call them Islamic but he's a Christian radical why did he get to surrender could you imagine if this guy was black or Muslim or whatever dead he's dead dead this poor kid Laquan McDonald dead when he probably didn't have to be dead I mean almost definitely in my opinion we let this guy live why. Shoot him. You can't do that. What? Well, but we do do it. We don't do it when it's a... See, that's the thing. Like, what, explain to me the difference. If it's not race, racial, if it's not religious, then why is he able to surrender and all these other people are getting killed immediately? Because no he, trial, was given, a, he was given the choice. Yeah, white. Is that what it is? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Like, is that what it is? I would hope not, but if that's what you think it is, maybe it is. Well... Let's look at look at the two different situations. Laquan McDonald has a knife and was stealing car stereos. Dead. Mm-hmm. This guy shows up with a, a you know a, a long gun. a long gun breaks on in, purpose to kill people. Yes, to make a statement. Right, and we just let him hang out, and for he can fi- surrender. We let him five hours, four hours. Come on, buddy, put the gun down. Right, he wasn't what's out the, in the open. What's he, the difference? He wasn't walking in the street. Yeah, exactly. Right, he wasn't. He wasn't black in Chicago. That that's the problem. He was white in Colorado. Mm. That's the pro. That's the difference. Uh, let's see, what do I got here? Let's let's listen to Carly Fear. So look. So the, anyway, my point is, I'm putting this out there that this guy was there. No more baby parts, and we know that this has to do with the. Um, Jesus, I can't think of what the group was, but whatever the group that was putting out those Planned Parenthood videos. videos. Yeah. So that's what this is. We kind of understand that this is this guy's motive. No more baby parts. All right. Carly Fiorina was on a Fox program with, uh, I can't think of the guy's name right now, but whatever. He might say it. Let's listen to the Carly Fiorina clip. We can kind of break this down, and this is how we'll, we'll, okay. we'll wrap up with this, uh, this segment. All right. This is Carly Fiorina talking about the Planned Parenthood shooting. Presidential candidate Carly Fiorina, who's taken a hard line against Planned Parenthood's abortion practices. Ms. Fiorina, welcome back to Fox News. Chris Thank- Wallace? Thanks for having me, Chris. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. What? It is Chris Wallace. Can we go back a second? Yeah. Did you notice anything weird about what she said there? Candidate Carly Fiorina, who's taken a hard line against Planned Parenthood's abortion practices. Ms. Fiorina, welcome back to Fox News. Sunday. Thanks for having me, Chris. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. I, I, that's I, fine. I, I, no, it's aggravating. I'll tell you this. I do have, uh, we added some Carly Fiorina sound clips to the soundboard. Oh, nice. So next week we, we'll, we'll hear that. All right. This is Fiorina who's taken a hard line against Planned Parenthood. Even though we know that the Planned Parenthood, you know, the videos that they put out, the Sting videos, are highly edited, wouldn't stand up in court. Mm-hmm. N- not, not, re- not actually real. Okay, you gotta You're stay with the footage. voting base. Voting base. Yeah, well, yeah. Keep getting that three percent. Get out there with this like crazy rhetoric that apparently inspires people to go murder. You know. Okay. Same to you. Your reaction to the shootings at that clinic in Colorado Springs? Well, this is a tragedy. It's obviously a tragedy. Nothing justifies this, and presumably, this man who appears deranged, if nothing else, will be tried for murder, as he should be. But it's a tragedy, especially on a holiday weekend. You have been one of the toughest critics, as we've said, of uh, Planned Parenthood's alleged harvesting of, of body parts, selling them for fetal research. Some of the pro-choice advocates are saying language like yours, not specifically singling you out, but language like yours has incited violence. I'd like to get your reaction to that, but also what was, is it that you would say to protesters, people outside these clinics, about the limits of their opposition? Well, first, it is not alleged. Planned Parenthood acknowledged several weeks ago that they would no longer take compensation for body parts, which sounds like an admission that they were doing so. 
Semantics. Well, we talked about that. That yeah. was something we brought up, which I said, bad move on Planned Parenthood's part because it sounds bad. It doesn't mean, though, she goes, well, it's not alleged. And then she says, but allegedly, right? Yeah. That they stopped taking donations because they wanted to avoid people attacking them, regardless, which I think is a bad idea anyway because they're still going to be attacked. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they were actually take. You know, like, that. that's the thing. It she's jumping to her. Close. Right. Uh, right. But then she's going to pretend that, like, nothing she said had to do with this, right? Even though she's just going to keep putting out bullshit lies. You know, it's like, it's not true, but we're just going to pretend it is. Okay, great. Secondly, this is so typical of the left to immediately begin demonizing a messenger because they don't agree with the message. Wait, so he's a messenger now? Is no, no, just the, who is? She, she, she's not saying that the shooter is a messenger, right? No, she's saying that she's going to be demonized because she's saying the oh. stuff about the Planned Parenthood video. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, because they don't do that with Al Gore and Hillary Clinton and everybody. It's this, like, stop pretending like you don't do the exact same thing. And it's the same thing with Islamic radical, you know what I mean? Yeah. C- come on, Carly Fiorina. I, I really don't like this woman. And mostly everything she's about to say is, is false because I, uh, I have facts to back up... Uh, you know, to to go against what she's saying. So you're going to do uh, lie fact, lie fact? Yeah, we'll, we'll keep going here. Let's okay. see what Carly has to say. The vast majority of Americans agree what Planned Parenthood is doing is wrong. And that's why the vast majority of Americans are prepared not only to defund Planned Parenthood, but also to stop abortion for any reason at all after five months. So what I... Okay, so let's break that down. Yes. A Gallup poll... Uh, recently said that later, after six months, okay, an abortion. Okay. 64% are against that. 31% are for, you know, are okay with that happening. I would rather that not happen, right? I, I think six months in, I mean, you're that, you you're know, in. I, yeah, you, you're, in, you're in. So you maybe should have made your decision a little quicker. Now, am I for banning it? I don't know. I'd have to look into that a little bit more. I understand the opposition there. That's, that's, we'll give her true on that. Okay. okay, but when she talks about people willing, you know, major, vast majority are willing to defund Planned Parenthood. August nineteenth, the Reuters poll: fifty four percent are for funding Planned Parenthood. Fifty four to twenty six. Hmm. September twenty third to twenty seventh, the New York Times CBS poll: fifty five are for funding it, thirty six are against. September twenty second to twenty seventh, in a Pew Research poll: sixty percent are for funding Planned Parenthood, thirty two percent against. September twenty fourth to twenty eighth, USA Today: sixty five percent for funding Planned Parenthood. Versus twenty nine again, so she's getting her numbers someplace else. Yeah, she's yeah, exactly in uh, in fucking uh, innovation land. Yes, I would say to anyone who tries to link this terrible tragedy to anyone who opposes abortion or opposes the sale of body parts, is this is typical left wing tactics. Yeah, and it's not typical right wing tac- tactics when Hannity links uh, a, a, a shooting. To Syrian refugees being an ISIS. That, that's, that's fair game. Yes. Right, because they agree with it. To the protesters, the people that are outside the clinics and oppose it. Well, any protesters should always be peaceful, whether it's Black Lives Matter or pro-life uh, protesters. Protesters should always be peaceful and respectful. Okay, thank you, Carl. That's a that's a real uh, hard stance you took there. The protest should be peaceful. You're right. They should be, of course. But I'm so, obviously, but that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, thank you for saying that. We needed your your wise counsel on this. She's a frustrating person. You hate her that much? I don't hate anybody. No, but you just I, like her that much. I really don't like her. Yeah, because she's play. She is obviously she's a politician. She's running for president. She's not going to be president. But it's like. I, I don't even know. Whatever. Okay. We, we broke down the video. It's just, it's frustrating when you see somebody like that who you, you'll you never get her into a corner where she'll be like, you know what? I, maybe, I, maybe I was wrong about that. No. She's just going to keep doubling down on the fact that the Planned Parenthood videos are real, even though they're not real. I said one thing, but, you know, the truth is another. Like, And then later on when more information comes up, she'll go, I reevaluated the information. No, but she won't do that. That's what I'm saying. That's what frustrates me about her even. Like at least least Hillary will be like, I changed, you know, yes, there was more facts. So I changed my mind. Okay, great. Her, she'll be like, nope, she doubles down on everything. Just tough talk, Carly. It doesn't matter what what the situation is. She's just going to stick with it. Same thing with Trump. He doesn't back down on anything. No, he doesn't. But that's a, that's a Reaganism thing, you know, where the the more facts pile up against it, no, we need to have faith in it. You know, it's like, I don't know, whatever. Maybe I'm just rambling, but I don't like Carla Fiorina. Okay. 
How do you feel about this episode, Joey? I don't know. I, I feel like we got to get into the swing of it a little bit. You know, again, we took a week off, but I think it was okay. Well, also, I feel it's very heavy topics. It is. It is heavy topics. and we During haven't... a holiday season, which makes it even worse. Sure. Well, we haven't done a heavy episode, like this heavy, in quite yes. a while. Next week, we'll have a little more politics stuff. We'll probably have a little campaign update, things like that. This ISIS propaganda thing, I'm very excited to get into. Yeah. Um, okay. Listen, everybody, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. We appreciate it. Um, Joey's going to read... The literary review, bad sex and fiction award passage in one second. Uh, then we'll we'll come back. We'll close up with like our little plugs and things like that, and then we'll end the episode. How's that sound, Joey? Sounds great. Um, oh, you have the email, right? So I don't have to show you anything. Yes, I have it All on right. my screen. So this is Joey reading from uh, the making of Zombie Wars by a gentleman named Alexander Heyman. Uh, Joey, go for it. Then he slid up her body, and his cock was inside her, and he was kissing her, the same welted tongue now inside wetted, her. Wetted tongue. A mouth. Full in the back of whatever was left of his mind, the light of reason was struggling against being finally exu- extinguished. Extinguished. And he was aware that wearing a condom would have been a good idea. But there was no way that he was getting out of her because she took him in. And he was with her in every move, in every gasp, kiss, and lick. She let him in so deep he didn't have to think about her. And therefore, he didn't have to think about himself. But of course, he was thinking about not thinking about himself. Okay, there you go. That's the first installment of Joey Reads from the Literary Review Bad Sex and Fiction Award. Uh, well, How did you think? Was that good? Yes, it Evan, was. Evan, what did you think about that? I thought it was pretty good, honestly. Okay. Yeah, we have more of those. We'll see. I mean, I, I like the idea of you reading sexual stuff at the end of the podcast just to, you know... Cleanse our palates a little yeah, bit, yeah, give people a little something mood. to think about during the week. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway, thank you everybody for listening. We really appreciate it. Me and Joey are uh, going to edit this episode and then head off to Madison Square Garden to watch the Rangers uh, trounce the avalanche. It's going to be great. Um, SoundCloud.com slash mandatory Samson. You can go on there. You can subscribe to the podcast, follow us, leave a comment on the track that we always respond to, get a little conversation going back and forth. YouTube.com slash mandatory Samson. You can watch the full episode. Uh, video when it goes up and you can also watch the show live stream every Thursday at 4 p.m. You can go on there. There's a playlist called live stream link, I think, and you can just check it out on there. Email us mandatory Samson at gmail.com. I respond to all those. And if they're good emails or, you know, whatever reasonable enough that we can read them on on air. Sorry. (laughs) That's true. We read them on air. Uh, Go on Twitter. I'm at man. Samp Joey, Joey from Jersey. With a Z. Right. And uh, you can also get in touch with us on Snapchat the same way. I, I like uh, the Snapchat stuff. That's fun. You could, you know, let me know when you're listening to the podcast, where you're listening to it, whatever. It's, it's great. Uh, so once again, thank you, everybody, for listening. We really appreciate it. And we're going to be back next week with a brand new episode of the Mandatory Samson Podcast. We'll talk to you then. <laughs>